Well, Florida is a state that is well known for its association with Disney. In the 1960s, Florida gave a special dispensation to Disney to build its theme parks. And one of the reasons why it did this is the idea was that Disney needed that sort of dispensation, a sort of Vatican-like carve out so that they could create their city of the future. That never materialized. Instead, it turned into Epcot Center. But Disney has maintained its Reedy Creek Special Tax District for about 50 years in this country. Well, now that seems like it may be on the verge of going away. And the reason that it's on the verge of going away is because F around and find out. This is, this is the theme of what is going on with Disney right now. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Republican-led Florida Senate passed a bill on Wednesday that would eliminate a special tax district that allows Walt Disney to govern the land where its theme parks sit as lawmakers target the company for opposing legislation restricting classroom instruction on gender and sexuality. The GOP-led House will likely vote to approve the measure on Thursday. Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, who called for lawmakers to consider such a bill in special session he convened this week, has made clear he would sign it. Losing the nearly 40-square-mile district near Orlando could be a major blow to Disney's Florida operations. The special district, created in 1967, known as the Reedy Creek Improvement District, exempts Disney from a host of regulations and certain taxes and fees. It has allowed the entertainment company to manage its theme parks and resorts in the state with little red tape for more than 50 years. It saves Disney tens of millions of dollars a year, according to a per person familiar with the company's finances who studied the issue over a decade ago. On Wednesday, Disney declined to comment on the bill, which is pretty significant given that Disney couldn't shut up about the Florida Parental Rights in Education Act. And now they've decided that it's time to shut up. And the reason they've decided to shut up is because they're realizing now that there are consequences to getting involved in political issues that do not involve you. We expect corporations all over the spectrum to get involved in economic-based issues. We understand that corporations are going to get involved in questions with regard to regulations of their industry. But there's sort of been a general understanding that corporations are not to get involved in things like educational issues. Corporations are really not supposed to be involved in social issues. Corporations are really not supposed to have a lot to say about a lot of these specific issues that are outside the purview of the corporation. Now, people associated with the corporation can do whatever they want. So for example, Chick-fil-A never gave a corporate donation on behalf of traditional marriage. That did not stop the cities of Boston and Chicago from attempting to ban Chick-fil-A when they found out that founder Dan Cathy was supportive of traditional marriage. The left has never made this distinction, by the way. The left doesn't care. If you're an executive of a company and you, as an executive of that company, give money to something the left does not like, they will just punish the corporation. The right has always basically said, we're not going to punish corporations as long as those corporations don't involve themselves in issues that are outside of their purview. But here is the deal. So I am the most free market person on the right. I'm, a, I'm an extraordinarily pro-free market person. I don't believe that generally the government should crack down on the operations of businesses. I think more freedom for businesses are good. I think that lower taxes for business are good for the economy of Florida, for the company, for the for the economy of the United States more broadly. However, however, corporations have to stand up for their own free market bona fides. And they have to not become tools of the people who wish to destroy freedom in this country on behalf of leftist groupthink. If you decide to just become a woke corporation that does the bidding of your democratic taskmasters, don't be surprised when you get clocked with a legislative two by four. F around and find out. F around, and, and that's what Disney did. Disney decided that it was going to inject itself into social politics in the state of Florida. It decided that it was going to try to use its massive corporate power in the state of Florida. It employs tens of thousands of people here. That is going to try to use that power in order to cudgel the state government of Florida to do the bidding of executives in New York and Burbank, California. And instead, what it is finding out right now is that the people of Florida are not up for it. And that's particularly true if you're getting special tax benefits. If you are getting a carve out, if you are the recipient of the largesse of the state of Florida, there are a few other corporations in the state of Florida who, by the way, are covered by this law that includes, for example, the villages, right? any place that sort of has its own special district that has been carved out for it, right? they, they, they get a special carve out. It's not a carve out specific to Disney, although it was in fact designed for Disney. But don't expect to receive the largesse of the state of Florida if you're going to go directly up against the voters of the state of Florida on behalf of a non-Florida based contingent of people who disagree with the policies pursued by the state of Florida. If you do that, you should not be surprised if the state says, you know what, take a hike. And again, the left has no ground to stand on here. I'm amazed, truly amazed to watch as the left suddenly swivels behind Disney. Right? All these people who say that corporations are bad, they don't pay any taxes, they don't do what they're supposed to do. Why do corporations even, why do you even need a choice between Hulu and Disney? Right? I, I'm amazed that all the people in California 
who've spent years, by the way, trying to target Disney. I mean, Gavin Newsom shut down the workings of Disneyland for two years because of COVID. The state of California has attempted to decide the constituency of every publicly traded company in California, saying you need a gay person, you need a black person. We, we're going to decide exactly how your business runs, which is why businesses have been fleeing to more business-friendly states like Texas and more business-friendly states like Florida. So Democrats have no leg to stand on when it comes to, you can't get involved politically with corporate. You are going to use your leverage to go up against corporate. Listen, as I say, generally speaking, I'm very much in favor of people not using political leverage and legislation to go after corporations and businesses. When corporations and businesses step outside their purview, the predictable result is that you are going to have an anvil dropped on your head by the legislature of the state of Florida. And that's precisely what is happening right now. According to the Wall Street Journal, Disney initially didn't comment on the legislation, but came under pressure from employees to oppose it. After this is the parental rights and education bill. After it passed, the company pledged to push for its repeal and to fight similar bills in other states. And so Florida is saying to them, listen, if you guys decide that you are now in the politicking business, welcome to politics, baby. You want to play the game? You, you buy the ticket, you take the ride. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Under the bill passed by the Senate 2316 on Wednesday, any special district established prior to the ratification of the Florida Constitution in 1968, not renewed since then, would be dissolved on June 1, 2023. Disney could seek to reestablish a special district after its dissolution. Reedy Creek has a permanent population of about 50, as well as its own board of supervisors and fire department. It allows Disney to construct new buildings and expand its parks without having to adhere to state or county regulations related to construction, wastewater management, and drainage. It encompasses four theme parks, two water parks, a sports complex, and hotels, stores, and restaurants. David Ramba is the executive director of the Florida Association of Special Districts. He says, you'll notice you never see potholes when you drive up to Walt Disney World. That's because Disney doesn't have to wait for the county to come fix them. Reedy Creek is, Creek is probably the most efficient local government in Florida because it's not a typical bureaucracy. It's run like a business. Right, but it also means they also don't have to pay for all of the red tape. Disney currently pays property and other taxes to both counties that surround it. That'd be Osceola County and Orange County. In addition, the company, as the primary landowner at Reedy Creek, provided most of the $153 million in revenue from taxes and fees the district collected in fiscal 2021. That money covers all of the district's governing expenses, including paying about 400 employee salaries and servicing about a billion bucks in long-term bond debt Reedy Creek has issued over the years. If the district is dissolved, that debt would supposedly become the responsibility of taxpayers in Orange and Osceola counties, although it is unclear exactly how the Reedy Creek district would be dissolved. And the sort of going wisdom is that this legislation will not stand up in court because it will be seen as a punishment for speech or that it won't stand up in court because it's just too complicated or that they won't be able to iron out all the details. Okay, but the, the bottom line is this. This is a shot across the bow of woke capital. That is what is designed to be. And again, I cannot get past. I cannot get past the irony of watching folks on the left demonstrate full scale their fealty to woke capitalism. They're very into it's not woke capitalism, by the way. It's economic fascism. When corporations work hand in glove with political taskmasters in order to achieve the goals of the political taskmasters in exchange for largesse, that is not capitalism. Capitalism is free markets uninvolved with the question of which politicians you bribe or which politicians tell you to do what. The, the, the notion that capitalism, which again, is supposed to be about free markets and open competition, is about which politicians you get in your corner. It was never about this. But if you're going to engage in that game, you can't be surprised again when it comes back around for you, when it boomerangs on you. MSNBC Simone Sanders commented on this yesterday, and I, just, I can't get past this clip. The reason I can't get past this clip is because Simone Sanders was the press secretary for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the same guy who believes that corporations are inherently evil. And then she went on to be the press secretary for Kamala Harris who talks about how corporations don't pay their fair share. But weird, weird now that she's a big defender of Disney, almost as though the left is very much in favor of corporate oligarchy, so long as those corporate oligarchs do precisely what they want. And this is my point. Once those corporate oligarchs just decide to become tools in the left's arsenal, screw them. Really, I, they, 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 I'm like Rorschach now. You're calling on me for my defense as a free market capitalist? My answer is no. You guys have become a weapon on behalf of people who despise capitalism, who despise freedom, who despise local governance, who apparently want to inject nationalized leftism into the education of small children. Ain't nothing bad enough for you at that point. But here is Simone Sanders, enemy of capitalism, enemy of big corporations defending Disney. It's amazing to watch these folks. It really is. I, I know 
bashing corporations is popular left and right these days, I'd be careful going. Oh, my money Disney. is on the Disney lobbyists, honey. Would, would you? Would you? My money Disney? is on the Disney lobbyists. Do you think those those state legislatures yeah. down in Florida are going to bend to the will of the governor? Did you see no. what Jared Polis said? He'd love a Rocky Mountain Disney. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, except that that's never happening because you know how much money has been sunk into Disney World down here? A lot, a lot of money. By the way, that clip ends with, I love that Simone Sanders like, I'm betting on Disney. I'm betting on their lobbyists. At the end of the clip, Chuck Todd has to announce to her that, by the way, it just passed the Florida State Senate. So yeah, well, well done. She, she knows corporate America about as well as she knows economics, generally speaking. By the way, the Walt Disney Company took a serious punch to the chin yesterday. It was a combination of the fact that Netflix stock dropped about 30% on the basis that Netflix had dropped 200,000 subscribers. So a lot of the streaming companies took it on the chin yesterday. But over the past year, Walt Disney has been taking it on the chin pretty dramatically. And they seem to be wanting more of it, oddly enough. So Walt Disney took about a 5% hit on Wednesday. They recovered slightly on Thursday. But according to Breitbart, this is correct. The Walt Disney Company is the worst performing stock in the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the past year, plummeting 31% in the last 12 months. Of the 30 companies that comprise the Dow, Disney has seen its stock drop the most on a percentage basis, followed by 3M down 25% and Home Depot down 23%. Disney shares were down more than 5% Wednesday as investors remained skittish on streaming entertainment companies following Netflix's disastrous first quarter results. Disney Plus subscription results recently disappointed Wall Street when the company reported quarterly results in November, causing the stock to tumble. And by the way, part of the reason that you are seeing the stock tumble is because if you decide to embrace wild leftism in children's programming, a bunch of parents like me will cancel our Disney Plus subscription. And Disney apparently has intent to double down on all of this. They continue to F around, and they're going to continue to find out. If you double down on all this, if you decide that Lightyear, which is a film directed at children who enjoy the Toy Story movies, is now going to be a story in which a main character is a lesbian, don't be surprised when I do not decide to show that to my six-year-old son. Don't be surprised. Because guess what? I don't think it's appropriate for him to be viewing that sort of stuff at his age. When he's an adult, he can pick what kind of entertainment he wants to watch. When he's a child, I get to pick what sort of values I wish him to imbibe. Don't be surprised when parents start to have questions about your entertainment and the choices they provide to their kids. And and the, the left is on the march on all this sort of stuff. I mean, down to the dumbest rumors. There was a rumor going around yesterday, I kid you not, that Thor, right, who's played by Chris Hemsworth, was going to come out as gay in the new movie. I, I'm not kidding you. That th- this was going, according to the New York Post, remember Marvel is owned by Disney, a new trailer for Love for Thor, Love and Thunder, dropped Monday, and some fans are now convinced the hammer-wielding Marvel hero will be gay as hell in the film. In the new footage, which teases Chris Hemsworth, title character going into retirement, Thor is seen giving Star-Lord a lingering look, which many eagle-eyed tweeters took to be a tease of the God of Thunder's sexuality, which would be weird since Thor has had an ongoing thing with Natalie Portman in the past several movies. The clip also shows Thor surrounded by the Guardians of the Galaxy. Remember what I told you, if you ever feel lost, 42-year-old Pratt's character says to the 38-year-old Hemsworth's character, just look into the eyes of the people that love you. Thor comedically moves his head to lovingly gaze right into Star-Lord's eyes. Not me, Star-Lord says, In response, Thor awkwardly looks away while saying, what? Just listening. The moment led people to celebrate on Twitter what one fan called Thor's gay awakening. Yeah, go for it, Disney. Do it. Do it. Bow so much to the the LGBT crowd that you actually, my guess is it's just a throwaway joke because that's what the Guardians of the Galaxy movies are. They're just throwaway jokes. But really, see, see how this goes for you. See how this goes for you. Did you know that every single like creates one additional leftist tier? That is just science.